So we have Jarrett Chamber of ATP. Jarrett, what is it that you're doing here? So we're doing education today on showing people from the Grow Academy uh, some typical nutrient deficiencies okay. that can be present that a lot of people always refer to as physiological disorders on a plant. You're physiologically disordered. I actually am. Look at this. <laughs> I am physiologically disordered. But if you actually, a lot okay. of people say plant normally looks like that in the yeah. field. Yeah. Well, we're going to show them that actually it does look like that in the field because you may be deficient in nutrient. So give us some examples. Oh, well, here's this. this, this is I have to feel this is, this is normal. So no, this is actually the normals over here. Rob. Right, so we're gonna right. we're gonna look at you see how green that leaf is. Yeah. Okay. okay. Got it. So I'm gonna go all the way over to here, and this is what you see a lot in the field. You see that there striping? We go. Beautiful, brilliant. Yeah. So that striping is actually magnesium deficient. Magnesium, yeah. So if we actually look at the root architecture, so beautiful. Look at that. And look. now. We're going to try to remember that versus over here, and you're going to see a lot more roots. Look at that, eh? That's the difference. Wow. So, a lot less roots with magnesium. This is sulfur. Look at the le less roots with sulfur. Less roots sulfur with deficient. Sulfur deficient. Yeah. We're just starting to see the symptoms. This um, is very good. Now, we look at this one here with zinc. This is a classic zinc deficiency. Look Do at you that. see that? Yep. That is zinc deficiency 101. Kind of venal, uh, venal necrosis. Venal necrosis, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to show the details. And this one, Rob, is copper. copper. Hard copper. to believe, huh? Look at that. It affects the lignin, so it's all falling down. And yeah. surprisingly, hey, look at that. Well, we've got, we got, we got some of that the twisting, twisting, some of that twisting, and, it, twist and, it, and it's dry. Yeah. And yeah. curled at the ends of the tips. Root system is still good. Yeah, but root if you system notice, good. Yeah. it's not as long. Yeah. And not as robust. Not as but, robust, yeah, but yeah. it's and then of course zinc deficiency. Quite, oh, look at that! Look at the difference there. Wow! Look at that! That's great. So quite, quite a big difference. Nice. So this is adequate nutrition here, and then these are no sulfur, sulfur deficient, zinc, zinc copper, copper mag and magnesium. magnesium, and this affects uh, phosphate uptake, right? Absolutely. So, so just, I'm going to show you an example of. Um, here's the biggest paradigm shift you want to have one. If you're phosphorus deficient you have equal or more roots than if you're phosphorus sufficient. Phosphorus deficiency does not create less roots, it creates less biomass on the top. There you go. So if you have less roots in the springtime, it is not phosphorus deficient, it is probably magnesium or zinc or potassium or something else. And then the magnesium, if it's deficient, will affect the phosphorus yes, utility. Exactly. Right? So I'm going to show you one here, Rob. This is a plant. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Pretty important nutrient. Minus the boron. Minus the boron. Up top, she looks fine right now at this stage. Okay. See oh, that root system? That looks like a little wimpy root system. Okay. okay. Compared to the check. Oh my goodness, look at that difference. Wow. So we're going to compare this to minus, potas oh, minus no potassium. No potassium. Look at the difference in the root systems. That is fantastic, Jerry. Now I'm going to show you um, a great experiment. Look at this one. Phosphorus. Phosphorus. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, there's the classic purpling symptoms. Can you pick that up? Yeah, I'm picking it up on the camera. Okay, yeah. and yeah. look at how nice the root system is. Pretty good in the root system. We'll show some yeah. photos later, show a little bit stronger. Now, this is one that's quite interesting. This is manganese deficiency. I don't know if you can see. Again, manganese these. will show up as intervenal chlorosis. Yeah. And there's one there. And there's necrosis one. later on is when it dies. But we're not seeing, these are both manganese, we're not seeing a huge difference in rooting. Normally we see a little bit of reduction in rooting. These were not, which okay. is, you know, experimental yeah. error. But what's interesting, if I were to grow a magnesium deficient plant and a manganese deficient plant, they look exactly the same with the only difference being magnesium deficient plants, Root. low leaves, Manganese deficient plant upper leaves, right? And we'll show some photos later that we won't. And so if we have a look at the, I'm noticing a little bit in terms of this the upper the leaf. Yeah. Uh, these leaves are flatter and relatively yep. smoother. Look at this. And look at the crinkling you're yep. seeing here. This is a manganese deficient, right? Yeah, manganese. And, and these and are manganese. And yeah. same over here. I noticed yeah. that this is quite uh, showing a lot of, of uh, I guess, just. Uh, Deformity, deformity in the yep. in the sh in the cellular mitosis. And see how small this plant yeah. is. And this one is phosphorus. This is a very tiny plant compared to where adequate phosphorus yes. is. And then on the boron side, which is interesting, you're seeing the boron We're deficiency just starting, to, starting to, to manifest itself on the upper leaves. Boron is phloem immobile, and so the lower leaves will pick up enough boron. They won't show the symptomology, but the upper leaves will start to exhibit the symptomology, and it's exactly what you're seeing. Jared, this is really cool work. Thanks, Robert. <laughs>